Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. This lesson we're going to get into visibility. And visibility deals specifically with these designators, these keywords right here. Now there's three that you can have. There's public, there's protected, and there's private. So I'm going to copy this code right here. We're going to go into our new file. And I'm going to create something real quick that will help, I think, make this a little more clear. So I'm going to create class, new class, extends my class All right so what this is doing is this is creating a child class so this class right here the one doing the extending is considered the child and the one being extended is considered the parent and the reason that is is because when you do this what happens is is you get access inside of new class you get access to all of the properties and methods that are available inside of the original parent class if they're not private and so that that deals with our our sort of uh designators here so i want to show you this kind of from the top to bottom so when we come down here and we instantiate a new instance of our class and we call our function or our method my function the reason that we are able to do that and if we reload this page you can see we get high. The reason we do that is because this, this method is set to public. If I come in here and set this to anything other than public, so let's set it to private for, for starters. If I set that to private, I get an error. If I set it to protected, and then we reload, I get an error. So this is the first sort of designation and the way to explain this and I, I think visually this will help but private methods and properties are available only here only within the func or the class that created them so private are only available here protected are going to be available within the class that created them and any child classes okay and then public are going to be available in the class that created him, any child classes, and outside the class. So in order to access and use it, uh, a method or a property out here, it has to be set to public. Okay, so let's, let's go through some examples. So let's go ahead and set this back to public. And let's go ahead and set this to private. Now, your instinct might be, oh, no. We're using private here and we're calling it here. So, and then we're calling that out here. So that's not going to work. And there actually that does work. And the reason why is because what we're calling out here is only the, my function method. It's the, my function method that is now referencing this variable. And these two things are within the same class. So my function can use this private variable. Okay. So that's why this works. We wouldn't be able to, if we, we tried to come down here and go uh, var like this, we wouldn't be able to access var directly because var is a private property. So it says we cannot access private property, All right? So that's a good thing to keep in mind. And then another example dealing with the child classes is if we come down here and we create a, let's create a new function, we'll public function, we'll call it display. And inside of it, we are going to simply echo uh, this and var, okay? So we're going to echo this var. Remember, this is our private, this is a private property. So it should not be available down here. So if we change this to new class and we change this to uh, display and let's just get rid of this well actually we'll leave that for a second so now what we're trying to do is inside of display we're trying to we're trying to echo out this private property if we try and do that you see it's blank we get nothing and that's because we don't have access to this now if i come up here and I change this to protected. So now remember, protected is available to the original class and any child classes. And I rerun this, now I have access to it. Okay, 
So again, that's the difference between private, protected, and public. Now, the instances where you may want to do this, a lot of times you may have a, a method that you use inside of a class that you only intend to be used inside of that class. Good example I can think of is, let's say you're creating a post class, and let's say when you pull the post data from the database, before you display it, you want to format it in some way. So WordPress, for example, does this, uh, it has uh, this, this uh, function or this method called WP auto top or auto WP auto P or something like that. Basically what it does is it takes what it gets from the rich text editor, which happens to add line breaks to instead of paragraph tags. So when you're writing in WordPress and you create a new paragraph, when that gets saved in the database, it doesn't get saved in paragraph tags, it gets saved with break tags. So what WP Auto P does is it, when it grabs that from the database, it changes those, uh, and it's a sort of complicated formatting method, but it changes those break tags and figures out what, where the paragraphs are supposed to be and actually use paragraph tags. So it's just, it's a formatting thing. Well, that formatting method may not be something that you want available to, to everything else. And just to kind of put a fine point on it, if you have a formatting method for, say, example, your post class, you really don't want to have that then also available to, say, your category class. Okay, so that really you would want that to be a private method. Um, because you don't want to be kind of using, uh, having a category class that's using a method from your post class, like two completely different objects. So that's not really a, a good thing to do. That's not a best practice. If you wanted to create a formatting method that you then used in, say, category and post and, and, and so forth, what you would do is take that formatting, meth formatting method out of the post class and you would create a format class. And then you would, anytime you wanted to format something, you would call that format class and you could call it from category or you could call it from post or you could call it from wherever. But you would, you would encapsulate it into its own thing if you wanted to use it in multiple, uh, in multiple classes. You don't want to be using a method from, you know, one class in another class, generally speaking. You want to keep them encapsulated to be their own things. And so one of the ways that you can do that is by making them private methods. If it's a private method or a private property, other classes can't access it. Or if it's uh, protected, other classes can't access it unless they extend uh, the one, uh, they, they extend the original class. So again, that's the difference between public, private, and protected. That's some of the, the background information, the context about when you would want to use these uh, and so forth. So hopefully you have found that helpful. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you in the next one.